Alrighty, guys. So in the interest of expanding on a theme, uh, I want to show again today how to make a mask, a luminosity mask from a gradient map. And I think that's very, very important to to review. Uh, and that is to uh, go over it again, because there's so many different ways to go about it. Right. And it's one of those little things that can be so, so useful especially when you need a one-off, right? Like if you're regularly making complicated luminosity masks, which I'm told is uh, pretty common in like landscape photography and things of that nature. If you're making a lot of those, then having some kind of like more robust, flexible tool makes more sense. But making a quick luminosity mask from a gradient map is very, very powerful, very, very useful. But today we're going to go over that again. But today we're also going to talk about a little bit of color science uh, to see how we can make our luminosity mask maybe a little bit more uh, as expected or a little bit more of what we want them to be. It just kind of depends on what you're doing. So we're going to go over kind of a nerdy way um, to distinguish how we can make a luminosity mask from brightness versus luminosity, which is interesting because technically a luminosity mask, I don't think anyone calls them a brightness mask, but we're going to talk about that in a bit. Let's go over the basic way how to do it right now so here we have an image and we decide we need a raster mask which is a common mask but we want to select excuse me select a specific luminosity so one of the greatest ways to do it is set out a gradient map like i mentioned now i have my color set to black and white right now if you don't you can just hit the letter d and x and that'll get it all reset and flipped and flopped and whatever the reason why i'm not making that a big deal is that when you add your adjustment layer of gradient map if you're not on black and white, you simply go to your gradient and modify it. So you can click here and choose black or really any other color, doesn't matter. You can just change it later is my point. So let's make, um, let's make a luminosity mask. Let's move this over a little bit actually. Let's make a luminosity mask um, that favors the shadows, which is my favorite demo to do. I think it works the best. So we need to take our black and our white stops as they call it and flip them. So we're gonna drag the black over we're going to drag the white over and now it looks like an inverted version of the image but the more we move the black note over everything that's white will end up our mask and i'll show you how to do it in a minute if you're not familiar but let's say um actually a little bit tighter let's say this is the mask that we want we look at it we go yes this is the range i want hit okay now we have what we can see as a gradient map covering the whole entire image how do we select that a couple of different ways the fastest is a key command Option command two on Mac or alt control two on Windows. And then you automatically select the luminance as it's called of whatever you're looking at. Okay. This works at any moment. You don't have to have a gradient map on, but when you do, it creates a perfect mask as follows. Option command two, because I'm on a Mac. As you can see, the selection is running. Now I no longer need my gradient map. If I'm going to make other luminosity selections, then I'll hold on to it by turning it off. But I have my selection running. This is something I've I've shown several times over the years. Um, we've had actions before that do this kind of thing. Just to give you a demo, let's go to hue and saturation. Um, and then we can change the hue around and change the hue of the shadows or I don't know, colorize. Let's colorize it red, green, blue, pink. All right. Now, you know, we, we, we can have a, a discussion, which we've had before, about the difference between why you may want a raster mask like what we just created versus blend if. OK, there are different reasons why we might want them, but this is a great way to make a raster mask as opposed to blend diff. Now, if you don't like it or you don't need it or don't want it, you need to change it. You can fill that mask with black, turn on your gradient map again. And let's say, for example, expand the range. Let's expand the range quite a bit. There we go. Once again, um, option command two or alt control two, there's a selection, turn off the gradient map, go back to our hue and saturation while the running selection is running on the black mask. Control command I to invert it. And there it is applied, right? And of course, here again, let's say I go to colorize, which is just a good visualizer. You can see how you can change the feel of the shot very quickly. And of course, there's other ways to, you know, color grade, if you will, uh, on the shadows and highlights and things of that nature. This is just showing a demo. That mask can be used for anything. It can be used for a curves layer. It can be used for, well, honestly, anything. Any of these layers it can be used for. It can even be used for a, another raster layer, another pixel layer. I think it's important to show that real quick because I had a question about it the other day. Um, you know, it's fine. People don't know. It's fine. You're new to Photoshop. You're not sure. Let's make a brand new layer and we're just going to fill it with something crazy like bright red. This is a raster layer. Keep in mind, turn that off, everything off for the moment. This is our mask. Option command two or alt control two. We'll go to our red layer and create a mask. 
And there you go. We're, we're literally masking out pixel data too. Just keep that in mind. A mask is a mask and it can work on any adjustment layer and any raster layer and folders, you know, um, layer folders. So keep that in mind. There are multiple ways to go about um, modifying and color grading the different areas of your image with masking of some kind. And yep, this is an ad break and it's sponsored by me. And by me, I mean NBP. Just want to show you real quick, guys. Speaking of, um, you know, grading on different ranges, that's where CGP, which is our newest panel, that's super popular. Everyone loves it from beginners. We're just getting started with color grading to our professionals, um, even our, some of our production team people from everywhere, from, from Tokyo to New York, have been using it. And there's a reason why. Apart from the fact that you can just quickly create grades, by moving these sliders around any way you want, actively creating cool grades. Let's put it on a little stronger, okay? But you can also, we talked about earlier on the demo, we talked about creating, uh, uh, controlling the range. Well, we can do that here. Let's say we have a nice purple. There you go. And we can increase the luminosity range of that purple and blend it in. We can take that luminosity of yellow, blend it in as well. Maybe take this one down, add a little more yellow. And all that is done with calculated curves, okay? Everything that you change here, the curves get recalculated. And although luminosity masks have a huge purpose and a very functional um, sort of reason for existing, um, you know, raster mask like that, when you create grades with RGB curves, it is literally the best way you can do it in terms of smoothness, in terms of a pleasing effect, no matter what colors you pick, no matter how extreme you pick, everything looks awesome. And like I said, everything uh, because it's all RGB curves being calculated and everything's awesome. But on top of that, it exists right on your layers window. So you can constantly keep working. Just, you don't have to open up that folder. You can just keep working. You can save presets. We have global adjustments for temperature and tint. You can do all kinds of corrective re things, um, excuse me, corrective processes as well. So a lot of people have said, a lot of our users say, hey, I no longer have to do this work in Lightroom or Capture One. I no longer have to do this work in ACR. Oh, I don't have to open up Camera Raw anymore. I have color wheels here right on the layers window. It makes everything happy and magical for that creative exploration. And now back to the tutorial. All right, so we went over how to make a luminosity mask using a gradient map. And we use the term luminosity when we say luminosity mask. We use the term kind of casually and kind of an overall term. But in Photoshop specifically, um, brightness and luminosity are a little bit different. We've gone over that in different videos. Um, the, the quick point is that you... Uh, to make something look pretty, to make a good edit, to to kind of achieve your vision in Photoshop, you don't need to know the difference. That, that doesn't really matter. But in terms of development things or making tools or just image decomposition, it sometimes is important to know um, and to work with the differences between brightness and luminosity. Now, let's do some demos um, with a color chart because color charts really show things very, very clearly. So we're going to temporarily come over here to this color chart, which I've set up. Um, with, it doesn't look it, but it actually contains pretty much all the sort of effective colors, including different saturation and brightness levels. They're just kind of tucked inside all these squares. It looks like it's nothing but saturated color, but there are low saturated colors in there. We use color charts like this all the time in our development um, space and our Im image analysis when we're doing different things for, like I said, image decomposition and other analytical things. We're going to leave this one here and let's go ahead and do the process we just did earlier about creating a gradient map. So we have black and white as our foreground and background colors. Let's choose a gradient map. Pop it open. And remember, this is the same thing. It's, it, this image, it's not a photo, but it just happens to be something that we're looking at. It happens to be a graphic, right? So here's a similar mask to what we made a minute ago. It is a uh, luminosity mask that favors the shadows, right? And as you can see, when you, uh, let's go ahead and hit okay for a moment. As you can see, we have all the different uh, hue angles going around in those squares. And those squares have the different um, saturation and brightness levels um, of every of every one of those hue angles, right? But when I do the gradient map to select a certain range, it's different. You notice the different shape of the luminosity ranges that it's selecting. Why are all the shadows different? You know, why is it more shadows selected down here and less up here? Well, if we come down here, these are our blues and our purples. Luminosity, like we talked about in the other videos, luminosity is a way 
of like showing um, effectively a simulation of human perception. We do tend to see blues um, uh, with all things being equal. We tend to see blues as being darker than yellows, even if the values are similar in terms of brightness and saturation. We still see them as similar or excuse me, dissimilar because just the way blue is perceived over yellow and other examples as well. So what we're seeing here with a gradient map is effectively a luminosity simulation. OK, so that's why these shapes are all different depending on the hue angle. All right. And we might have you might remember on another video we talked about, well, how do we get brightness data? One of the fastest ways is to put a black and white adjustment layer and then there's presets in black and white adjustment layer and we put it on maximum white. OK, this is brightness data. You notice when I turn it off and on, look at all the hue angle squares. They're all equal now. So if I turn on our gradient map again, look at that. They're all exactly the same. We're no longer pulling, lum uh, excuse me, pulling luminosity data, if you will, in our gradient map. So therefore, our perception, remember, we're not looking in the middle right now. Our perception is no longer a thing. Now we're exactly pulling exactly brightness levels, you know, from the darkest to a certain range. In other words, that's what the gradient map is doing. Choose white from the darkest to about this point linearly. If I turn off the black and white adjustment layer set to maximum white, that's luminosity, that's brightness. Okay, so how do we apply that to our image? Well, this is why a color chart is so important. If I take these two exact layers that I just made, bring them over to our image. Let's look at that. This right now, because they're both on, this is a luminosity mask made from brightness data. If I turn off black and white layer, it's a luminosity mask made from luminosity data. Ever so slightly different. And again, I'm just being nerdy as a demonstration because Either one of these will work just fine and you can adjust the gradient map however you want. There is no active, obvious, you know, documented benefit of making this with your brightness data as opposed to luminosity data. But every now and then on something very, very specific that you might be doing, it m might be beneficial to pull brightness data versus luminosity. And this is how you do it. Just one example, guys. So to give you an idea of, of why we do these layer stacks to create um, different visualizations that can then can create selections for us, right? Never mind what we can do with LUTs in this space, but that's another discussion for another time. So again, if I turn off the black and white layer, which we put up there first, this is luminosity. So turn it off here, this is luminosity. And it just looks like the, the range changed, probably because there's a lot of blue in the image, okay? And blue is the most obvious difference in luminosity um, perception. So just a minor little thing there, super, super nerdy kind of demo to give you an idea. Color charts are really great for that. I said it before, if you guys want more uh, discussions of color science and whatnot, this is something that's ongoing with us, uh, that we're constantly learning about, researching, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's much of, of a fun exploration as it is a useful exploration for what we do here at MVP. But if you guys want more videos like this, let me know. The first half of the video, of course, is more practical for just making things look pretty. But if you do want to know more about color science -y things, we can definitely ramp that up um, and see what we can provide on that front. But anyway, want to show you that. Don't forget, oh, by the way, uh, as a reminder, no matter how many layers I have here, no matter what I have going on, Option Command or Alt Control 2, and I can select the luminosity of what I'm looking at, turn those off, and then do whatever I need to do. Let's make curves. Okay, very, very subtle. Can barely see it. <laughs> wow, that's really subtle. But it's there. Okay. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. And again, uh, really, I do want your feedback. If you guys want more color science stuff, we'll try to ramp that up as well. But we always provide new and cool ways to, you know, hopefully expand your workflow approach so you can make those prettier pictures.